Hey, Carl. Uh, I, hey, I've hey. stolen a rod a few times on his show. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yeah, it was a very simple one when he had that blue light ticket. And uh, he was talking about how uh, many hours it took for the process to go through the court. And he was appealing it. And I just told him a very simple answer. I said, why don't you just go into the court and say that you're, who is making a claim that this blue light is not OEM? I believe it is OEM. I believe this is the way I got the vehicle when I purchased it. So unless any man or woman is going to come forth and claim that this is not OEM, then it stands as OEM as true. And who would have came forth and said it was not the way it was originally manufactured from the original equipment from the manufacturer? Who could come before the court and say that that was not originally placed on that dashboard 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago? Nobody. Yeah, you know, Nobody. That, yeah that, no, that, no. that is a good argument, you know, on what they you're doing. Been. And you're right. Yeah. And then this other simple one is... um. Who was uh, a plaintiff in this Washington, D.C. trial? Well, see, I brought that up to the judge, and they told me it was the statute. Okay. Who was the name on the title, on the paperwork, in the caption? Uh, it said the United States of America, and that's what I brought up. But we brought did this you, up, up. Did you bring up habeas corpus? Yes, we did. And what in the habeas corpus did you bring forth to the court? Well, we brought in is the fact that if we could go back and show a constitutional violation or a statutory violation that nobody injured party was part of this, they had to dismiss. Okay, well, the Habeas Corpus Act simply states that any man who's taken into prison has the capacity, has the right to cross-examine his accuser that he's done something wrong. So why didn't you just bring a very simple Habeas Corpus, just write Habeas Corpus and say, the number one rule in Habeas Corpus is that if I've done wrong, I have the right to stand and and cross-examine my accuser, is who is my accuser or what is my accuser? Well, see, I, I brought that up in numerous of documents, and, and Harvey and I, no, we no. went through. I'm not saying it's numerous documents. It's one sentence. Just have yeah. to give a notice to the court or a habeas corpus. Just ask them a simple question. Do I or do I, has habeas corpus been suspended in the United States? And they'll say no. i say, okay, then under the act of habeas corpus, do not have the right to have to cross-examine my accuser. Who or what? I think it's more of a what that's accusing me of doing something wrong. Is it a who or is it a what? And do you understand yeah. what is standing before you? Do you think that I am a who or do you think I am a what? That's all you had to do. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I did go before Kessler. I did ask who... And what? Where is the heavy? Who is the heaviest corporate? Who is the injured party? Not asked who's the injured party. The United States is an injured party. It's a harmed party. Only a man could be harmed. Injured parties could be my mailbox. My mailbox could be an injured party. Injury is something to a tangible object. Harm befalls man. Injury befalls the property of man. A personal injury means you hit my mailbox. You hit my car. If you bodily harm me, it means you injured my actual body itself. Harm and injury is not the same word. They're not interchangeable. Well, it still comes back into the mailbox is not capable of writing out an affidavit and walking it in. Could represent, it, could, it, could have a, it could have a representative. I could represent my mailbox. I could represent your mailbox. I could represent the United States. I could represent the state of Alabama. I could represent anything. I could represent an apple. Am I the apple? No. But can I represent it? Yes. Can I act like an apple? Can I act for the apple? Yes, of course I can. Why? Because the apple has no capacity to stand, but I do. All you have to do is ask who or what is bringing this case forward. Okay. And am I not a man? Do I not have the right to cross-examine my accuser who's believe I've done wrong? And what wrong have I done? Have I done something wrong? And they'll say, no, you've done nothing wrong. I mean, that's exactly what they will tell you. You ask a judge a very simple question, have I done anything wrong? And he'll say, well, no, you violated a code, you violated a statute. Well, when I've done something wrong, you let me know. It's like, no, we're not here to discuss whether you did something wrong. And what are we here to talk about, that I did something right? 
<laughs> yeah, like I said, your your, your arguments. There's nothing wrong with your arguments. Your arguments are right on what you're what you're coming in here with. Oh, it's yeah. a lot of fun. I mean, it's very simple. I mean, you spent a lot of time studying statutes and codes, and yes, I did that as well. But one big thing I think that you should really be dedicating it to is reading, or well, not so much reading, but writing a dictionary. Because once you master the vocabulary, once you master the words, there is no such thing as a synonym. In good law, the word is concise. The word only means one thing and one thing only. If it can have more than one meaning, you know this if you read code, if you read statutes. If a law is ambiguous, it is not a law. If it can be interpreted more than one way, it is not good law. It is not law at all. So when you say complaint and claim, it's not the same thing. When I say who or what is the plaintiff, it's not the same thing. Is it a who or is it a what? And you have a who standing before you. Where's the who? I'm not a what. And who always trumps over what? Who, I, a man, will always trump over an apple or a mailbox, over a what? I could be harmed. It can only be injured. Big difference between a harm and injury. It's not a synonym. Huge difference. I can injure your mailbox. I can restore it. You can't harm me and restore me back to where it was before you harmed me. Huge difference. You have to know these words, and you have to be concise, and you slice through it like a razor. Once you make the words so sharp and so crisp, you need so few of them to use. Like the judge said over in England to some man who called me up, the judge said, if you really want to use this common law, sir, you better keep it down to one-syllable words. If you really want to master this, you better get it down to one syllable. You better make it short, sweet, concise, right to the point. So I'm just trying to give you a little hint there to try to stay away from uh, two-syllable words. If you can make it one syllable, use the one-syllable word. Okay. And that's, that's, that's a good way to go at it. I mean, if you want to ask me something, you can if you want to, but, um, you know. No, like I, said, I, to... I understand, you know, it, you've got some good information out here, you know, and there's nothing wrong with your information because you know, I've listened to it. My my intent when I got into this D.C. case, like I said, I, I wasn't walking in here as a defendant. I was walking in here as a as a prosecutor. I was in there to expose their corruption. And that's something that majority of people out here aren't doing. Like you said, you're saying who or what. I'm walking in here and saying, your rule says you can't do this. Number one, under rule three and four and five, you had to have a complaint. You had to have an affidavit. You had to have somebody that was injured, and you can't write it up after the fact. You had to have it before the fact. And that yeah, was an, an injury befalls a what? An injury doesn't befall a who. And you said it again. They had to have an injured party. That's a, that's a what? It's easy to have an injured party. Anything can be injured. I, you can injure my apple. You can injure my mailbox. And the, the big thing, too, is when you were saying that you came in as a prosecutor. So that meant, like, like uh, what's his name? The guy with the long beard. Um, the man out of California explains. Uh, I don't know if his name is... I forgot what his name is. But anyway... When you when you come in as a prosecutor, then you have to file your own case before the court. You have to be the plaintiff. A, a prosecutor is the plaintiff. The prosecutor is the one pursuing the defendant. So if you didn't come in with your own claim or your own complaint into into court, you can't be the prosecutor. You said you wanted to prosecute them, which is fine. Did you have enough? Did you file a case at the same time that they were moving their case against you in that same public courthouse? Not the same day, but I did go back in and bring in a claim against them, and I did sit here and make the issue. But the point, the point I was getting into with these people, that any time the prosecutor said anything, I was able to come back in and object, and I was able to sit here and show what he did wrong, where he did it wrong, and how, especially when the judge was questioning me on some of this stuff. I was pointing out their errors. Before you sit here and talk to me, you better get your own act straight. But you said early in the show, 15 years ago, the very first lady judge back in a little town of Ohio said that you cannot use their stuff. And if yeah. you do choose to use their stuff, that there's a hierarchy system, like the United States Supreme Court makes the ultimate decisions for them. There's a pyramid scheme. And the judge sits way above the defendant, and you're just a defendant. So when you're coming into court with their stuff, she's saying you can't use our stuff. First of all, you've got to get permission to use this because this is copyrighted and it's privileged access information. 
Right. So, and if you do try to use it, you know what? I'm just going to deny you because, you know what? I'm the daddy of this court, and you're just one of the I, children. I, I run this court. So why bring that stuff into their court? Why not bring your own stuff? Well, at, why, that, why? at that particular time, this goes back 15 years ago, and a lot of the stuff that you're teaching and what uh, Howard Griswold taught was not out here on the Internet accessible at that time. Okay, all I was just basically saying is just still, the lady told you 15 years ago not to use their stuff. That was very good advice she was giving you. Now this, you came, you know, into this district court, the D.C. court, and you're still using their stuff. Somewhere along the line, you should have said, you know what, their stuff is not going to work for I. It, so I better try a new tact because their stuff is, is useless for me to use. So you I, know what, I, I better... I better the thing of it is, you're saying it's absolutely useless, but it's not, because by me coming back in and hammering the shit out of them and doing what I did with them was not what they were expecting. They were they expect the typical person coming in is that I'm not that person, and that's my whole argument. Well, my argument was when a judge sit here and says we brought up about the word person, I proceeded to explain to her their terminology, and that didn't fit me. I'm not a person under your legal definition. I didn't have a firearm under your legal definition. You sit down and mix it and match in your words, and this is where the issue's coming in. We have to, I'm coming back in and showing them what they're doing wrong, how they're doing it wrong, because they're using words in such a general terminology that if we don't come back in and rebut that general terminology, that's why we're getting our answers handed to us. Did you tell them that you were not a legal person? Yes, I did. By my paperwork, I came you, back what, in. Do you understand that every single other other entity that you saw in that courtroom was a legal person? It was a judge, it was a bailiff, it was a clerk. Do you understand they were all legal persons? And so when well, you're saying you're not a, when you're saying you're not a legal person, well, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I'm not in this game. Everybody else in this room is in this game. I choose to opt out. I'm not a legal person. So if you're opting out of being a legal person, what's going on is a legal procedure with legal persons speaking. They're not going to hear you because you just said I'm not a legal person. So you're opting out. You're taking the status of that of a man or whatever. You you're, you're pulling yourself out of their game. Only a legal person has status and standing in a legal procedure. Once you said you're no longer a legal person, you no longer have status or statute, all your paperwork is going to be falling on deaf ears because you refuse to be a legal person. Uh, but, uh, again, you and I could go for hours on this, on your way. And like I said, your way is not wrong. It's not my way. It's just the rules of the game. If you want to opt out, if you don't want to be a Boy Scout in the Boy Scout society, if you don't want to be part of the legal society, if you want to opt out, you're voluntarily, nobody could force you to be a Boy Scout, nobody could force you to be a legal person. You chose to opt out of being a legal person. Once you jumped out and said, I don't want to be a legal person, I am not a legal person, well then, it's like, I'm not a Boy Scout. Okay, we're having a Boy Scout jamboree. You're not going to be part of this. Okay. Anything you got to say, you know what? Mm, we really don't care. I. Uh, Again, it goes back into I have watched firsthand where people have tried to do this, and by remaining silent, coming back in, and the judge just bangs the gavel, and they get their ass hauled away anyhow. And you can yell and scream all you want is that I'm not I'm not in here. I'm not legal. I'm not here debating. You know, like I said. We're not de we're not dealing with a legitimate system right down the line. What you're saying is not wrong. Well, a lot of people have coming in here; they're not wrong. But what I went back in and and went after was to show they're not following anything. They're not following anything. Well, I guess I like I said, I've just been very lucky in court, and I put the paperwork in, and I tell people don't open their mouth, always put it in writing. And when I was put on trial in Canada, the judge asked the prosecutor and asked the, the investigators, what is the most inflammatory thing that Carl tells people on his shows? And, he, and they said, Carl always tells people, do not open your mouth in court. Make sure it's in writing first. Once it's in writing, then you can record it. Then you can put it on the record. But make sure that everything that you say to that court is put in writing. That way it has to be filed 
And that way, once you utter it, it's recorded. So when you just start yelling out things in the court, like you said, people walk into a court and say, I'm not a legal person. Did you put it in writing? Like, you got the ticket 30 days ago. On 29 days ago, did you put it in writing that I believe you uh, issued the citation to a legal person in which I am not? No, you didn't do that. You wait till the day of the trial, and then you think you're going to walk in, just like with you. You had preliminary hearings. You could have set the rules at the time of the preliminary hearing that the plaintiff will appear, that th you will abide by the Constitution. You can't do it during a trial. You had the time for it at the preliminary hearings. And if you choose to wait until the actual game day, into the, when the battle is in the heat of battle, you're not going to be able to enforce any new rules. They had preliminary hearings where you could have contested their procedures. And if you failed it, okay. Well, then, then you say, I can only appear under these conditions. I guarantee there's nothing in writing that says that you will cannot appear as a defendant to be an active member of this legal procedure unless we abide by these rules. And then you got a ruling that, no, we are not going to proceed under the constitutional rules, and you'll have the judge put it in writing, say, we are not going to proceed under the Magna Carta. We are not going to proceed under a court of record. We are going to proceed this in this manner. And in that way, you'll have proof for everybody of all time that it's corrupt. But until you have a preliminary hearing and you get rulings by the judge, you'll never be able to prove it's corrupt, except that you failed to bring into the police that you will only appear under these conditions, like you want blue M&Ms at every concert that you're going to appear at. And they're going to say, no, we're not going to have blue M&Ms. You're going to appear regardless. You're going to have to bring something in writing at preliminary hearing saying that you're establishing the rules. These are the procedures in which I will appear. If you fail to abide by these civil procedures, or these criminal procedures that have been well established for the last 500 years, then I cannot appear at this time. I will not be able to appear on, in this manner. Okay, but so, I, have, I have done exactly put the paperwork in, the paperwork went into the mail office at the federal court, went straight into the judge's chamber. The judge wrote across the top, denied, very to file for leave, judge's name, dated it, sent it down to the clerk of court. And like I said, it got down there about two weeks later. The judge never cut an order. I have filed paperwork in. I have went back in and I nailed the prosecutor because they have not answered the paperwork. Judge Kessler told Finkelman, oh no, told Wallace, do not answer this man's paperwork at any memorandum whatsoever. Okay, so when the judge denied you, what did you do next? I went back in, filed more paperwork in, making an issue under Rule 12, that under Rule 12, you cannot deny any documentation that can affect my appeal. You're, you are in violation of your own rules and regulations. Is there some and, reason why you didn't just ask them to give you the findings and facts and conclusions of law? Did you not just ask them, get point of law? How many times in the trial did you yell out point of law? Well, I see, I've never had a trial. Everything that I've had from May 30th, 2013, up until February 9th was all status hearings. I never once had a hearing. Okay, so any any time that you any time any you never came before any magistrate or a judge. Yes, but they was they were not trial. They were nothing more I than okay, status I didn't hearings. I'd say they were, I didn't, okay. There was they were whatever you want to call them, adjudicatory hearings. Maybe they were adjudicatory hearings. But if that's what they were, is there any time that, that, that you had an issue with what they were saying? Did you just yell out point of law? Did can, I you just give me a, can, you, can you give me a ruling on what you, on how you came up with that crazy, you know, why are we proceeding under this way? That's all I'm saying. Did you just yell out point of law? No, I never can you used, give me a ruling? No, I, I never once screamed point of law. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Instead of you trying to correct them, why did you let them try to correct themselves? Why did you say to them, Excuse me, point of law, and let them explain it. Instead of you saying, "Well, the Constitution says this, and the statutes say this, and and and, and uh, you know all these articles of confederation say this," why don't you let him say where he's getting it from? Why don't you let him let him tell you so you can say, "Okay, thank you." Is that where you're getting it from? Huh? Let me do some research and see if uh, you're on top of your game. Okay, thank you. So you keep telling them what they should be doing. Why don't you tell them? Let them tell you why they're doing what they're doing instead of you telling them how they should be doing it. Well, I kinda, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to debate with you. No, I, what you're saying is correct. I'm not arguing with that point. But I'm it just makes life easy. But there are different avenues 
because I have sit back, I have watched so many people try to walk in and defend, and I don't defend. It's not my job to defend. It's my job to point out their screw-ups. Okay, so that's what I'm just trying to say. You're trying to point out what they're doing wrong. Why don't you just ask them? I, don't, I believe what you're doing is wrong. Can you give me a point of flaw on which you're relying on and how we're moving or not moving in this math? And so instead of you telling them you're doing it wrong, why don't you say, I believe you might be doing it wrong? I'm not sure. I'm not an expert. You know, I, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. I, I think I'm pretty good at this. But you know what? Can you give me the point of law in which you're relying upon? Because honestly, I think you should be doing it this way. But honestly, why are you doing it this way? Is, is there some law that you're relying upon that I'm not aware of? That's all I'm saying. Just act, I'm just saying more acting more courty, so more cordial when you get to the court. Just play yeah. stupid. Just play like you're dumb, like you're an idiot. But they know you're not an idiot because you kind of know what you're doing. So let them fill in the blanks. You give them the questions. You ask like a king. You give the questions and you let them do the answering. Instead of you spouting out, let them spout out. Because then they can be held liable. Well, they, they have. Because like I said, whenever Judge Roberts, we got into this thing and I brought up, because the prosecutor brought up that Mr. Class. He came into D.C. He did have in his ready-to-carry and ready possession his firearms. I said, excuse me, I object. I said, first off, your judge just ruled what he sat down and said was unconstitutional. And what did Judge Roberts say? Oh, well, we're going to try to get that overturned, so we're not going to allow what? that why didn't, why didn't you just say to him, I have no idea what the term or the word firearm is, but what I do know is that everything in that car, everything outside in that driveway, everything outside in that street is my property, and everything within that property is my property, and nobody has any right to tell him what I can and cannot possess. That is my property. It is not stolen. Nobody's got a complaint or a claim that something has been, that this piece of property has been stolen that's six inches long and three inches round. So is somebody making a claim that some, there's some stolen property? Because other than that, that's my property that's sitting out in that street. I am not in Washington, D.C. I'm, you know, I'm within, I'm, I'm standing on a, the North American continent, but I am not in, a, not in Washington, D.C. It's like I tell everybody all the time. It's like, do you want to meet me in that rock or do you want to meet me at that rock? I am not inside of anything. What makes you think I am in Washington, D.C.? What is a Washington, D.C., and how did I fit inside of it? How big is this Washington, D.C. that you speak of? What is a Washington, D.C.? Please clarify. See, I, Carl, I've never learned to play those kind of head games. And that's exactly what it is. That, that is a head game. And I was never taught to play those kind of head games. It's, it's called this word game. It says crosswords. I'm, I'm crossing words with you. And that's what they're playing. They're word nerds. These, these people on a bench are word nerds. They live for words. They've been doing it since they were little children. They're word nerds. So you're crossing words. Instead of crossing swords, you're crossing words. This, this is the battle that you're in. You better know the battle that you're in. You better bring the right tools. You better bring the right equipment because they're crossing words with you. They're concise. They don't have synonyms. Everything means one particular thing. And unless you want to get concise and precise with these people, we're going to slice you up. <laughs> 